Hello everybody, Ragtag Sagvi here. Welcome to the next episode. In this episode, we're going to be exploring this here cave, as we're likely to find some footprints of the Iron Will Pokemon, and maybe this cave will lead us to where the fourth temple is. So, let's go right into it. I've also healed off off screen, so Raiden is back in action. Now, if you want to find footprints for the Iron Will Pokemon, you come to this cave. As this cave ha has to be its favorite location in all of the tundra. It is ridiculous how easy you can find its footprints in this cave. Like, look, you can see Subats. Yes, you can clearly see Subats. You can clearly see its footprints almost everywhere you look. Uh, where's my quick balls? Nice, critical capture. Subad will be added. Subad live in caves, down where sunlight won't reach. In the morning, they gather together to keep each other warm as they sleep. Send the Subad to the box. Forty-four percent on the data. Let's fight Kabutox. All right, go quick ball. Give me that kaboo tops or not. All right, if you die, it's your own damn fault for not being caught. Let me bite you back. Ooh, that hurt. That was a critical too. Yikes. It's creating metal sounds. Yeah, my special defense would harshly lower after hearing metal sounds like that. All right, where's the dust balls? Cause this luckily is a cave. One. Though you wouldn't think it given how quickly it broke out of the dust ball. Alright in. Oh, let's revive him so he can get the experience. Wow, Inteleon is taller than Kubutos. I never realized that. I never realized how short Kaputa Ops was. I thought it was always a fairly tall Pokemon. But, but 41 is towering over him, Jesus. Critical capture. Right, Yoshi grew levels of uh, 45 and Riding grew level 88. The case behind its extinction of the species is unknown. Kaputops was, aggress was an aggressive Pokemon that inhabited warm seas. And also, I think I remember in the anime, wasn't, wasn't the lighthouse owner Bill? In like a Kaputov uh, outfit, or was it Kaputo? He was in. Cause I remember when Ash found him, he couldn't uh, get to the button on his suit that would open up the suit. 
I forget if he was a Kaputos or a Kaputo. If anybody remembers that episode off the top of my head, because it's been years since I've last seen it, do remind me which Pokemon species, which Pokemon of that line was it? Because I think it was either, if it was Kabuto, then I think he couldn't reach it because the arms were short. And couldn't bend very well. If it was Kaput, if it was Kaput Tops, then obviously try to reach for a button with those side hands. And yeah, you could probably see the problem right there. Now that I think about it, Bill is always in trouble now that I think about it, because I think every uh, every form of media he appears in, he's always a different Pokemon of, in some way, shape, or form. In the anime, he was either Kaputops or Kaputo, so Ash had to get him out of a suit, but in, that, but in the anime, they explain he was in a suit rather than being transformed, where in the games, I believe he was turned into a, he turned himself into a Clefairy, if I remember? Clefairy Clefable? Um, in the original games, and then in Let's Go, I think he turns himself into, like, a Nidoran. And, or Nidorito. Um, it is said that in the world, there is a mineral vein housing a large pack of slumbering carbink. It is also said the pack has a queen. Yeah, I think in Let's Go, they change it to, um, Nidorito. And then, I believe in the Pokemon Adventure manga, doesn't he get turned into, like, a Rattata? Like, I think every version of Bill that's appeared in form of media, he's always been a different Pokemon in some way, shape, or form. Or when he first pops up. Ooh, a big nugget. Alright, I think we're like, what was it? We're like halfway through... Um, the, uh, data for the Iron Will Pokemon. So, yeah, all we have to do is do a quick few runs in this cave and we'll get all the data we'll ever need. Lavitar! Who's absolutely adorable. Oh, I love the Lavitar. Why? Why is half the time these quick balls are not even working like this, like they're advertised to? I gotta understand it breaking out of it, maybe shake twice, maybe? But Jesus Christ, you wouldn't think they're good to use on the first turn when they break out immediately. And you're dead because of it. But as I was saying, yeah, Lavitar is absolutely adorable. I remember Ash's Lavitar from the anime. And its story, like how traumatic it's it had when it um, got separated from its parent. And then how it, uh, Ash had to basically help it through its trauma when they ran into an unknown. It was a very interesting arc. Oh, I've already caught a Lucario. Okay, goodbye. Leech life. But yeah, absolutely. I think that those series of episodes what made me how those series of episodes made me fell in love with Lavitar. And there's another one. Will you be obedient and actually get caught in a quick ball and not break out immediately? One, two. Okay, that I'm willing to accept. At least you shake a few times before you broke out. And not like, oh, screw you. I'm just going to break out immediately. Here comes a hype beam. I will not lie, that animation for Hyper Beam is sick. Alright, where's my dust balls? There they are. C 
Come on! We're in a cave! You're supposed to be four times effective in a goddamn cave! And we caught the Lavitar! It feeds on soil. After it's eaten a large mountain, it will fall asleep so it can grow. That sounds horrifying when you think about it. It eating an entire mountain. How are there mountains still left in the Pokemon world if you have Pokemon eating mountains whole? Ryu! Who's adorable? Also, where are the footprints? Because I noticed we haven't ran into any more. Go quick ball. One, two, come on. Yeah, you can't copy me if I haven't even attacked yet. Who are you helping? This is a single battle. And you're gone. More foodie prints, and I can see a really tiny Ryu! <laughs> okay, the timing of me picking up that footprint makes the Ryu, Ryulu down there look so tiny! He looks like a freaking ant! The tiniest Ryulu to ever exist! That's kind of funny! I picked the footprints as it was spawning in, so it would look so tiny! Either because it looked either being tiny because it was a baby or s literally a very tiny Riolu. That was kind of funny. We've caught the tiniest Riolu alive. <laughs> I wish size differences were a thing in Sword and Shield because that would have been really funny to see. Somebody please draw fan art. How small did Riolu look in that? It can use waves to call all auras to gauge how others are feeling. These same waves can also tell the Pokemon about the state of their environment. Alright, we're at 60% data. So we just need a bit more. Which again... Best thing to do is just go back and forth in this cave and you'll find all the footprints you ever need. Ooh, Tyranitar! Oh, and I missed... How did I miss that item? 70%? Oh, wait, I think I remember that item. I think I have to come in uh, into the cave from a different um, area. Let's get ourselves a Tyranitar! Which is so badass! Let's see, will you be nice and get in a quick ball? No! No, you will not! Ooh, that looks sick, but it hurts. Wait, does Giga Impact does recoil? Or does it have an ability that prevents recoil damage? Because I thought Giga Impact did recoil damage. I'm pretty sure it has some negative side effect. If it does recoil and... Okay, it must recharge. That's its side effect. I thought it was an attack that did recoil. And so because it did that, it would take a lot of damage. So I'm like, does it have an ability that prevents recoil damage? And Kodo exploded.
Badass Croc versus Badass Dino. Or Godzilla, whatever Tyranitar is. I think it's actually supposed to be more based on Godzilla than anything else. Ooh, critical capture! And we got Tyranitar! Arsenic grew to level 89! And that was our only level up. Tyranitar's data will be added. The quake's cause when it walks makes even great mountains crumble and changes the surrounding terrain. Send it to the box. Kodo, time for you to take point. Seventy six, seventy eight, eighty percent. So we just need another twenty percent of footprints. We're here in the frigid sea. Uh, let's quickly go to the other side of the cave. Then I'll probably go back into the cave and do another run. And we might capture a few Pokemon that's out here and find that temple. Uh, hello! I didn't realize you would be floating in the ocean. Have I caught you? Have I caught you, Isun? No, I haven't. I'm surprised you were just floating in the water. I don't ever... Like, even though I play shield the least, I was not expecting you to be just floating in the ocean. Especially having an ice head. Wouldn't think having an ice head like that would make you buoyant. and refuse to capture, so I'm gonna have to hit it once to get rid of its uh, ice head so it can actually start taking damage, and then hit it again if I wanna try and capture it. Goodbye, ice face. Let's give you some sapping from the Thunderfang. Oh, that did significantly less damage than I thought. Ooh, Kodo. Yep, we're gonna have to get you out of here. Uh, let's bring in Artisan. Yeah, Blizzard's gonna be really accurate because there's a hail out. Uh, Dazzling Gleam? Roar Veil's worn off. Let's throw an Ultra. One, two, three. Click or not. Come on, get into the goddamn Ultra Ball. One, two, three, and click. What again? Boy, boy. 
And of course, the hail takes Artisan out. I'm hating bullshit like this. One, two, three. Now click. Thank you. This Pokemon keeps its heat eat sensitive head cool with ice. It fishes for food, ooh, dangling its single hair into the sea to lure and prey. Well, let's heal and revive. Let's heal Okoto and revive Ive Artisan because the game was determined to make sure that one of them uh, fall. Jesus Christ! Definitely in the next episode, I am definitely camping. Also, I have to get um a full restore, some more full restores off screen at some point. At the rate we're using them. And we'll probably give this area a proper exploring. Where the heck is that other end of the cave? Oh, it's right there. I was, like, I was about to say, it's like, there's no way I've passed where the other entrance to the cave. No, this ain't it because. Well, we found the temple. Where's that other cave entrance? There it is. It's behind here. I'm like. Where is it? I know the ge the geometry should have it be around this location. Get ourselves earthquake. Hmm? Has the audio become distorted? Sounds normal, my capture. Don't tell me I like bumped the cable in my in like in rage, and now the audio has become distorted. Definitely gonna have to check that in between episodes. Because the way the A button sounds from on hearing my recording doesn't sound right. Good thing too, we found all the footprints. Anyway, we'll end the episode off here now that we're in front of the temple. And in the next episode, we'll go and explore what what's in these ruins. If you enjoyed this episode, do like the video as it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this episode and share the video so more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. I'll see you all next time. Later.